Another WWDC has come and gone, and with it, we got a new release of a new version of iOS. And every year we hope for a couple of things, maybe a fresh coat of paint, some speed improvements under the hood, and maybe some better things coming to Siri. And though we didn't get all of those things with iOS 12, there's a lot actually to unpack and a lot of cool features that you're probably gonna be interested in. So let's talk about all the interesting, cool, and new features coming in iOS 12. So the first thing Apple talked about with iOS 12 is kind of doubling down on performance, especially with older devices. So iOS 12 will work on devices from the 5S generation of Apple devices from 2013 up on, and it's gonna bring improvements to devices that are usually are running slow on iOS 11. So things like taking a photo, searching on your phone in Siri, bringing up the keyboard, launching apps, are all gonna get much faster on older devices, in some cases even doubling the speed, making it almost two times faster to do things on these older devices, hopefully eliminating that sluggishness that we're seeing now. Of course, it wouldn't be an iOS and Apple keynote without talking about AR, and they did talk a lot about it in this keynote. They talked about a new file type they developed with Pixar, this USDC file type, which will basically make it easier for developers to create these immersive new AR experiences that you can enjoy on your phone. There's a couple of new features in AR, the biggest being this new shared experiences thing, which will basically allow two or more people to jump into a virtual world in AR, interact together, and see the same thing, but control different components. The Stock Photos app on iOS also got some updates, kind of mirroring what Google has done on Google Photos, and now has smarter search suggestions where you can search on place, person, and event type a little bit better, and also this new For You tab, which basically shows you recent photos you've taken and suggests people you can share them with with just one tap. We'll see how well this actually works, but it looks pretty cool. Of course, every year with WWDC, we hope with a new version of iOS that Siri gets better. And though we didn't get a lot of under the hood details on improvements, we did get one cool thing coming to Siri and that's the ability to do shortcuts. That basically lets you, the user, create your own Siri shortcuts in a very simple drag and drop editor. So for example, let's say I'm going home from work. Now on my way home from work, I want Siri to do a couple of things for me. I wanna get the fastest travel time. I wanna be able to turn on and off lights at my house. So when I get home, my lights are on. I wanna set my thermostat. I wanna get my favorite podcast playing in my car. All that can be done in this Shortcuts app and I can just say one thing to Siri like, hey Siri, I'm heading home and it'll trigger all those commands in order, do everything I want and I can get in the car and go with the Apple Maps running, my podcast playing and everything good to go. Looks really cool, looks super customizable and it should be kind of a cool addition to Siri that gives you a little bit more control. We talked a lot at Google I.O. about this whole digital health, well-being, lifestyle monitoring kind of thing, and Apple is kind of mirroring that with this new, kind of similar digital health initiative in iOS 12, and it starts with Do Not Disturb. One of the things we've been long waiting for is group notifications, and that is here in iOS, so those notifications will look a lot better, but also you have a little bit more control over how you see those notifications and do not disturb. So you actually have the ability to turn off notifications from apps for a certain time period or altogether if you choose, and also toggle do not disturb on and off by location, by time, or just turning it off together at night, and when you wake up, you're not bombarded by notifications, but do not disturb kind of eases you into the day, gives you a little glance of the day ahead, and then gives you the rest of the notifications. Just a little more control there for do not disturb. Like I said, that whole digital well-being thing is a big part of iOS 12, and in iOS 12, you're not gonna get these weekly reports and also daily reports that show you how you're using your phone what apps you're spending your time in, how often you're checking notifications, what apps are actually sending you the most notifications. And based off those reports, you can do a couple of things. You can set time allotments for how long you wanna spend in certain apps and the phone will kind of nudge you out of those apps when the timer is up. You can tell an app to stop sending you notifications for a certain time or altogether. And if you're a parent, you can have even more control over your children's iOS apps, basically using this report to see how your child is using their device, what apps they're using, where they're spending their time, and you can even limit what app they're using at certain times if you want to right from this whole new dashboard. Let's move on from that to a new version of Messages for iOS 12. And there's a couple of cool features in this new messaging app. The first being, if you're a big fan of Animojis, there's now tongue detection. So when you stick out your tongue, your Animoji will mirror that character, which is kind of cool. And also this new thing called Memoji, which basically is kind of like a 3D version of a Bitmoji. You can use your facial characteristics to build your virtual Animoji, basically. Your hairstyle, glasses, skin tone. So you can use this Memoji in a variety of ways. You can send it it like you would an Animoji. You can use it as a sticker. You're able to send it to friends. You're also able to use it in a new feature of this messaging app, which is group FaceTime call. So you can use your Memoji to talk to your friends, 32 friends if you wanted to all at once. And it should work pretty well, assuming that your friends are using an iOS device or a Mac. 
Some smaller miscellaneous iOS updates also came. Updates to the news app are here. There's the stocks now on the iPhone and iPad that have been redesigned with Apple News integrated. There's a new voice memos app that is now on the iPad. And hey, CarPlay now supports third-party Maps app. So if you wanna use Google Maps or Waze, you can natively. So that was kind of it for iOS 12. We saw the big things like Siri shortcuts and Memojis and this whole digital well-being dashboard. But besides that, that was kind of the biggest stuff coming from iOS 12. Of course, there should be improvements under the hood. Your phone should feel faster, but that was it. So what do you guys think? Is this new iOS 12 update a big deal for you? Are you gonna jump on the bandwagon, download the beta, or get on it as soon as it is released? Or are you gonna kind of wait off? Or are you a little bit disappointed? Leave your comment down below and let us know. Thanks so much for watching. I am Robert Rosenfeld from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you in the next one.